And we are live. I am just going to put your website up there, Tony. Hello, everybody. It is Ness Jones here. I am the host of Decoding Your Canine Summit. And with me now, we are very, very lucky to have Tony Shelburne, who is from tonyshelburne.com.uk. And she is an animal behaviorist. She is a tea touch practitioner. Excuse my dogs. And um, she is also the author of several books. Welcome, Tony. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's pretty, really early there. Um, so, um, yes, just drink lots of tea and coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's 7 a.m. in the UK, so it's very early for me. But, yeah, I, I love coming and doing this, so thanks for inviting me. No, thanks so much for coming on. And you are a speaker for the summit, um, and your topic is all about tea touch, um, Tellington tea touch practice and training. But today we are talking about something very exciting, which is calming a dog using tea touch, which is really, really interesting, I think, because in the summit, a lot of the dogs, I mean, obviously you've got the separation component, but there's a lot of dogs that are suffering from reactivity. Um, overstimulation, you know, hyperarousal, all those kind of things in the environment. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that will be wanting to know more about this topic. So um, maybe you can talk us through that. So, yeah, I guess the best way to start is to explain a little bit about tea touch if people don't know it. People often get the wrong idea about tea touch. They think it's just this thing that moves the skin around in circles. <laughs> Um, but we have a whole bag of tools that we can use. Um, and that does include the body work, which incorporates circles, lifts and strokes. And these tap into the neural pathways. We get um, uh, neurotransmitter releases. We know we can get the brain in a more rational thinking state, which is, of course, for our over aroused dogs is perfect because busy bodies, busy minds, you know, they're all linked. And if we think about the Yerkes Dodson kind of scale of arousal, you know, we don't want our dogs going over that peak out of that high performance stage into that I can't think, I can't listen, I can't take instruction from you. We want them in that nice, you know, just before the curve or, you know, coming up that curve if they're a pet dog. So with the tea touch, you know, not all of these dogs will want to be touched straight away because they're too busy and they need to move. So we can use things like the confidence course or what we call the playground of high learning, which allows them to move, but taps into their proprioceptive system. Posture affects behavior. So that's the thing with T-Touch. You'll hear us say that all the time, change the posture, change the behavior. So when we change that behavior into a more balanced, um, neutral, confident state, as we know, when we are feeling good and we are feeling confident, we can deal with things around us. That we can, you know, someone might pull out in front of us in the motor, and we're like, oh, never mind. Or somebody gets a little bit shouty at us at work and we can just deal with it. We can rationalize it and we can help bring them down. But when they're like really up here and we're really up here, what happens is that, you know, it, it just doesn't work. So when we put them in that movement of the groundwork, we can allow them to kind of start to pause. And that pause really helps them to be able to have that self-confidence, self-courage and self-control, which when you're really kind of, um, you know, over the top aroused, your self-control goes and you can't really think about doing anything else. So in the UK, I run a program called uh, Reactive to Responsive, and this is for all my clients and a, a colleague of mine who works with me, Claire Lush. All our dogs that they are reactive to, you know, people or dogs or joggers or whatever it is. And we use tea touch within that a, a huge amount. So we'll have four dogs in a big field and we'll put them in the groundwork so that they can watch a dog in the distance or a person that have got another job to do. And it helps them just to kind of bring those arousal levels down. We can then add in some counter conditioning and other tools to help them. And over the, the months that they come, what we do is we progress that groundwork closer and closer until they can do it either together so there'll be might be one element away from each other, or we'll put it in a line so they'll do parallel walking, but they've also got things to think about their feet. They've got to step over, they've got to go round things, they've got to work out how to use their bodies. 
And that really helps them to be able to go, oh, I can do something different. I can listen to mum, I can, or dad, I can think about my feet. I can, oh, there's a dog over there, but it doesn't matter because I'm thinking about what I'm doing here. So, and along with that, we can add in things like body wraps, which again, is really good for proprioception. So how are you using your body? Are you kind of very upright? Well, why are you doing that? Can you come into a more relaxed, elongated posture? So again, it all links back to that posture affected behavior. So we can I, yeah, can I interrupt just and play devil's advocate a minute? Um, it sounds like as, you know, if you were just, if you were, a skeptic maybe yeah. it sounds airy fairy oh posture is going to make them more confident they're going to be better behaved but you, i mean it's good that you're kind of explaining it in, in detail and in nitty gritty yeah. because otherwise it just sounds like you know wave a magic wand sort of thing you know shoulders back now you're better <laughs> yeah but think about all the human things that we do that is exactly the same yeah. so feldenkrist yoga you know, all of these things that we do, um, what's the other one that I can, uh, the Alexander Technique, you know, it's all about using our bodies in a better way, a more efficient way. So if any of you have done any of those techniques, use those techniques, you'll know how effective they are. I mean, our work came from the Feldenkrais work. So Moshe Feldenkrais, Israeli physicist who had an accident, lost the use of his legs, we trained them by using non-habitual movement. So non habitual movement will, you know, shorten and enhance learning, tap into neural pathways that you would not previously use. We only use about 10% of our neural pathways. And right. if you think about if you hurt a hand, and it's your dominant hand for writing, you think you can't write, but you can retrain your other hand to do that. And it doesn't really take that long. So the more that we use different parts of our bodies and the more we use it efficiently, we'll find, you know, that we're more flexible in our minds as well. And if you, I always liken it to, you know, um, ballet dancers who are very flexible, you know, they're very open-minded, they'll take on new ideas. And I think about stuffy old professors <laughs> that are maybe in, in their offices for ages who are kind of get locked in way and way and they can't really change their opinion about stuff or, you know, yeah. be flexible with their outlook. So the more we can use our bodies, you know, everything's linked in our body. You know, if you think about neuroscience, and I'm not a neuroscientist, but, you know, our, our bodies and our brains are so linked. Um, and we can't, you know, necessarily, you know, retrain our brain. That rewiring sometimes gets a bit stuck. That's harder to do, although it is possible. But what we can change is those muscular, you know, emotions that are stuck in our bodies, so if you look up the um, the work of Candice Pert, for example, and she proved these molecules of motions that are held in the cells of the body. If you think about a time when you've had an accident or a, a traumatic experience or a happy experience, we revisit it in our bodies. You know, we can feel that that injury. We can feel that joy of when we got married or whatever it is. So. And sometimes the bad stuff gets stuck. So, you know, if we've had a head-on collision in the car, for example, and we, we're driving and the same sort of circumstance happen, what happens is that we will brace for that impact of the, of the you know, the oncoming car. So it's the same for the dogs. You know, they get stuck in these, these muscular memories. You know, the tension in the body will tell the brain and the body how to react. So they continue to be fearful, even though that, that initial fearful experience is gone. So it's so, kind of like a cyclical thing. It's like, um, you know, going around in circles, sort of. Yeah, I can, you kind of just get stuck. So we look for tension patterns. So hot spots, cold spots, areas the dogs don't want us to touch, areas where the skin feels tight. Might be that the coat is different. And that just tells us that the dogs are kind of just like, you know, they're not, their bodies are holding that tension, that memory of something going on, like being attacked by another dog or a firework going off next to them. So if we take that, that tension pattern away by doing things like the body work and the, and the movement exercises, then we've taken away the, the, the body's kind of ability to tell the brain how to react again. So we can really start calming all those emotions down. So I work with a lot of traumatized dogs, whether that's fear of noises, people, dogs, being left alone, you know, all these things. The dogs are, you know, they're 
they're just you know they need to have that help to be able to change that that reaction in their body and because that physical mental and emotional balance is so linked we and we can't sit them down and go oh there there don't worry you're all right being alone i'm coming back or there there don't worry about that dog over there but we can change how they feel physically and that that will then link on so um, if anybody's watching and they've got any questions specifically related to your dog, I know there's people watching that have got dogs that are anxious, fearful, over-aroused, reactive. I'm sure Tony would love to answer any of your questions or just say hello and let us know that you're watching because we would like to say hello. And I feel like I'm sitting in the dark. It's, um, do I look really dark? <laughs> I'm sitting in the dark. It's still dark outside. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, it's uh, well, the sun's going down here, so no. Nah. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. And I, I like just touching on the posture thing again. Um, like I know myself, like I used to do yoga twice a week, and my posture was so much better, you know, like I didn't slouch in front of the computer all the time, it was like up and you know, da da. And yeah, I think you're right. I was more confident about life, about the world, I was better able to deal with things that were thrown at me than than otherwise um and yeah completely different perspective so if we can give that to offer that to our dogs and that's so it's such a beautiful thing and the world you know for dogs is not a great place is it it's busy it's overpopulated with dogs they come across lots of things that aren't natural to them we put them on leads we control everything in their lives so giving them something back by doing some body work with them in the evening, for example, or even on the walk when they've been stressed to help them kind of recover from that, or while they watch that scary dog across the way, or in preparation for doing some alone training, for example. We can just help them come into a better learning state, that rational part of the brain that helps them to be able to go, oh, I could try something different. Maybe I don't have to react to that dog. Maybe I can just turn away. Maybe I can go lie quietly as my owner does a little bit of a micro leave or whatever it is that you're, you're doing with them. So, I, you know, I just love it. I mean, I've been doing tea touch since the late 90s. You know, I'm an instructor now. I teach people all over the world. We've taken all of our program online. And I, the, the changes we see in the dogs are just, and the cats and any other animal that we work with, horses and people, it's gone back to people now. It's gone oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, and the changes we see are amazing. And I often do body work or we body wrap people so they can feel the work. Um, uh -huh. And people are always saying, oh, wow, that feels really different. Oh, yeah, that pain that I had is, is subsided. I had a lady once who had been bitten on the leg. I said, I can't touch it. And I get, and she would jiggle her leg up and down, you know. It was like it feels really, really kind of uncomfortable all the time. And I, we body wrapped her knee. And it was for like a couple of seconds. And then we took it off and she went, oh, it's gone. It completely re-kind re of, you know, organized her nervous system and took that, that feeling of irritation away. I've had the same thing in people where I had someone who's had, um, she had problems with the legs. It was a really hot day. We were doing a demo at a show. And I, and I started to do some work on her legs. And her legs were like, clammy cold like she was in shock and she was like oh no no i don't i don't like that don't do that i said okay well why don't you work your ear just touch your ear and do some ear slides and she was like oh that feels better oh, i could do that while i was driving you know and sometimes <laughs> you get these instant changes not always sometimes we have to kind of work through it and we'll get some dogs who don't want to be touched initially and we've got lots of tools for that so we could touch them we could put them in the groundwork, but we could also touch them with feathers or paintbrushes or something that's not our hand. We use wands as well, which are like, they look like um, riding um, crops, but they're white and they're, they're not made of ones. <laughs> um, so, that, you know, we have so many tools and we came up with all these tools because one thing didn't work with a dog or, you know, we needed to find a different way to kind of connect with that animal. And that's what I love about Tea Touch. It's always evolving. We're always adding new stuff in as we discover, um, you know, new touches or new techniques. Or, you know, we were probably, I believe, we were one of the first, first people to do two points of contact on a dog on a harness. Now, how many people in the world do that now? So many people have a lead attached to the front and the back. 
we've been doing that for like over 20 years and now it's becoming the norm so lots of things in the world and dog training actually when you look at them you can look at them back to linda tennington jones and robin hood you know the co-founders of the work and it's just filtered in and people don't necessarily know it's come from t-touch because we're like very open about sharing the work but yeah if you chase it back there's quite a lot of stuff that's come from us oh that's interesting yeah yeah so um if somebody now watching was had a reactive dog um they're out in the world their dog sees whatever is their trigger what should they do is that a, is that a hard question to answer yeah, it's like yeah two hours <laughs> what is it? Yeah. <laughs> just, so just I, would, a, I would start at home so we need to be able to help the dogs to feel calm and release some of those tension patterns at home first so we often set up lots of exercises for them to do body work body wrapping ground work at home that confidence course I then use toy stuffy dogs because we can control that, you know, and we can pick the distance the dogs can cope with. And we can ask them, can you cope with this? You know, can you cope with it sitting still? Can you cope with it moving a little bit? And then we'll gradually kind of bring them together and move them. But of course, people have to go out into the real world. So I always say start at a distance, you know, go somewhere you've got lots of escape routes in a big field where you can see everybody coming, go somewhere where the dogs are more likely to be on lead and under control and just watch them at a distance. Can you do some touches? Can you do something that just grabs the nervous system's attention and kind of brings the dog back into their body so that they can listen? Because... One of the things, you know, people think, oh, you know, the touches, they're very slow, you know, you're very calm. When the dogs are really up here, we have to meet them where they're at. So we might instead do something quite fast, like a spring box, which will just kind of help the nervous system kind of come back down to earth. And then we can use things like lead stroking. If they're really fixated on a dog, that lead stroking can just get them either to turn, and it's an invitation to turn, not a, come on, we need to go this way, or we can just check in with our person. And when we can do that, of course, we can mark and feed them as well. So we can add in other training methods. So I'll quite often, you know, with our reactive program, we're not just using T-Touch. We're adding in, you know, Leslie McDivitt's brilliant um, pattern games or, you know, her Where's the Dog game. We're, we're using, you know, clicker training. We're using l lots of traditional things. But Sometimes if the dogs are stuck and they're like, oh, this is really hard, it's the T-touch that will get them going, either that lead stroking or look, let's just do some touches and just calm you down a little bit. Or if you've had a really bad encounter, some dogs, you know, owners let their dog rush up to you, we can use it as recovery as well. So we'll get out of that situation, stop and go, OK, let's just calm you down. You know, you're OK. Let's just make sure you're okay for the rest of the walk so that they're not going up and up and up and up in that sympathetic nervous system. We're bringing that balance back between the parasympathetic and the, and the, and the sympathetic. Yeah, I guess in that case, you're kind of combating um, trigger stacking as well. Yeah. 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 So people often say to us, oh, instead of my dog going up and up and up on a walk, we can bring them back down or they actually get a bit better on the walk because I'm using it. And I always say, look, use it as you come into a situation. If you're able to use it as a dog passes you, for example, the dogs, you've got enough space, that dog's under control, your dog's coping, continue doing it while the trigger goes past. But then afterwards, if you need to move or, you know, once it's gone, that, that trigger's gone, stop and do a bit more. I had a little Labrador years ago who had come from really bad circumstances and she would really kind of spook at dogs if dogs came up too too fast she would her tendency was to bolt and obviously that's not safe so i taught her very early look i'm your safe person if you come to me i'm going to do some touches with you as the dogs approach i'm there i'm kind of shielding you i've done a little quarter turn as the dogs approach, I would then go, oh, hi, doggies, you're really lovely, and I'd interact with them. And then she could choose whether she interacted or if she didn't. What she learned was if she went six feet past them, she'd wait for me. Those dogs would go off, and I'd go, oh, you're a good girl. And I'd do a few minutes to kind of calm her down again. And then she'd be like, oh, great, let's go for a walk. So for her, instead of bolting, it was like, you're my safe person. I'm going to come to you, and then you're going to make me feel better after that slightly scary situation. 
and it yeah. worked beautifully for her you know we didn't have any bolting after that we had i'm coming you um, you're my person you're making me feel better we find that in like firework issues as well the dogs often will come and find you i've had dogs that have literally come to me and kind of gone can you touch me here because i really need it here yeah um, a friend of mine had a rottweiler years ago and it's just when i was actually learning to to do the work and i'd gone to meet her down at her horse yard and and jake would just come and he just stood in front of me and i was like jake what are you doing and i tried to move and he was like nope nope i'm standing here and i just reached down and did a few touches his whole body went oh that's better <laughs> and then he let me go off <laughs> it was wow. hilarious it's just like yep yeah, you knew that you needed that work so yeah you that you'll find your bond will really improve with the dogs because they know that you make them feel better calmer you know more relaxed more kind of focused um so yeah it's, i just love it it's just a really great way of connecting even if your dogs don't have an issue it's just a lovely way of bonding with them yeah um so i'm, I'm sure anybody if you've got any questions please ask them while tony's on live um but i have a question so it's probably one that everyone wants to know anyway is um if you do have a dog with an issue or not, you know, and you want to try and help it through that issue and you start using tea touch once you've familiarised yourself with it, obviously. Um, it's, I know what the answer is, but I'm going to ask anyway. How long does it take? Yeah. Yeah. And we were always say, well, it depends on the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? Sometimes we get these really dramatic, quick changes. And other times we know that the dogs have been so traumatized about something that they're always going to be anxious. So with our reactive dogs that I work with here in the UK, I always say to people, you've got to manage your expectations. If your dog is reactive... They're, they're potentially going to be reactive for the whole of their lives. If they've been practicing that behavior for two, three years, you know, it's not going to disappear in five minutes. But what no. I can do is give you tools to manage and to help your dog have a better life. Now, some of the dogs we work with will go back to being off lead and being around dogs, even if it's just, you know, specific dogs that they know. Others we have clients who go, oh, I, d I don't get embarrassed by my dog anymore. I don't worry about it. I know how to cope with any situation and I know how to calm my dog down. <clears throat> so I guess on average in the UK, depending on the level, the, the behavior and the level of, you know, um, that the behavior is, yeah. and how they add it, I would probably work with someone between, you know, two to five one-to-one -one sessions um and we'll kind of just work through a program and we'll just keep working until we can see the dogs are better now for some dogs of course if they've got underlying health issues that's going to affect how much they can change as well because if we haven't addressed that or it's an ongoing issue that we have to manage like a pain issue that's always going to yeah. affect their reactivity or how they cope being alone or you know whatever issue they have so how long they've had the issue, the age they have, the temperament they have, other end underlying health issues, these, was, these will all be factors in how long it might take us to work with the dog and to help them. So, yeah, I, it depends on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like with everything, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's a hard question to answer. But, I mean, people want to know the answer, even though it's it's it just, yeah, it really does depend. Um but so, I mean, I know you've been a practitioner for, um, you know, since the 90s, but you're also a trainer. So I guess if somebody wants to get help, it's good to have someone that can actually isn't just doing T-touch per se, but is also, you know, you're a behaviourist. So, you know, you've got a, a great perspective on on dealing with these issues as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all my skills put together are really useful. I, you know, I never go in and just use one thing. And if you talk to T-Touch practitioners, we're, we're all the same. You know, we, we think of T-Touch as kind of, uh, I think of working with a dog as a jigsaw puzzle. So I've got T-Touch maybe as my main piece in the middle, but then I'm going to bolt on all these other bits. 
And the more methods and the more things we can use, so that might be a vet visit and treatment from the vet, that might be alternative medicines, homeopathy, essential oils, that'll be some behavioral modification stuff, some counter conditioning, or it'll be trained, you know, everything put together is gonna make everything stronger, right? We don't wanna just use one thing. You know, we've got practitioners who are physios as well. We've got practitioners who are cranial, uh, cranial um, practitioners. We've got people who use batch flower remedies. You know, they all have their place. And I, I love using that multiple modality approach because it works. And, you know, and if I don't have a skill that I know a dog needs, then I will refer those people on. And I work with a chiropractor um, pretty much 80%, 90% of the dogs I work with, I send them to a chiropractor. And I'm never wrong, you know, the dogs are always out somewhere or the muscle is tight, it affects how they're doing. So if I hadn't then referred them to that, then I would have had a limited you know, amount of change with the T-touch because I haven't underlined, haven't dealt with the underlying issue. So yeah, everything together is really essential. Yeah, taking a holistic approach, definitely. Yeah, and that includes diet as well, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. But I just yeah. love that you've got you've got all those things you can call on. Um, so, what was I going to ask you? You are an author as well, though, not just a practitioner of T Touch and a behaviorist. So, can I know we talk about this in the summit, but um, maybe just quickly mention what your books are all about? Yeah. So. Um, a few years ago, a friend of mine who's a, as a she, she writes all the time. She writes for all of the big animal magazines in the UK. She's like, I've got this idea about some like little books and the little books would be just one particular issue. And we'd put everything in that book that we knew about that issue. So if somebody had a dog who was frightened of fireworks or the dogs didn't travel well or the scared of the vets or whatever issue it is let's put everything in a book and of course a big component of that will be t-touch but we also put in why it may happen you know the training you could do we put in alternative um medicines and stuff in there as well i mean everything we can think of it's all in one package uh, and we came up with the the title so our publishing company really is called skinny books because they're skinny they're tiny books um, they're not that tiny, but they're, you know, they just got one subject in. And we both lived, or she still lives, with a skinny dog. So she has whippets. I had lurcher. Um, so that's kind of in honour of, of them as well. Um, and we're just right. We just just this week have finished the manuscript of the next one, which is Help My Dog oh. Won't Sleep. So, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That would be important. And dogs, people don't realise how long dogs sleep for. Or need, you know, need to sleep for. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. For sure. And how important it is for everything, all of their, you know, their immune systems and their emotions and, you know, everything that happens to us in sleep, it's just important for the dogs. Yeah. Um, if anybody's watching and wants to ask a question, please ask it now because um, we might wrap up soon. Um, but, Tony, tell us about this because you're offering a discount code um, to to learn about T-Touch. So can you talk us through what yeah. this is all about? So this that's the website that they go on to and the discount code, which I'll show is that. But I'll put, yeah. the, um, I'll put the website up first if people want to write that down. Yeah, so learn learn.ttouch.ca, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. If that one doesn't work, just go on to ttouch.ca. So that's our Canadian um website, which right. holds our learning platform. So of course, in COVID times, we took all of our training online. So on that platform, you can learn and uh, and, and do all your training as a T Touch practitioner if you decide you want to add that to your toolbox. But also on there is lots of applied T-Touch sort of shorter courses. So I've done one on firework fears. There's one for cats. There's one for dogs who don't travel well. Um, you know, there's also ones for reactive dogs that people have done or for puppies or for older dogs or for other animals. So 
all of us instructors have kind of uh, developed these little mini courses. And in that course, you'll get videos, instructions, and like lectures, you'll get written material. And, um, you know, they're really useful. If you just want to know a little bit about T-Touch, there's one that just does, it's a mini course on the body work, for example. There's even a free course on there, which I mentioned on the, my other presentation um, about loose lead walking. So the, the price range is like really wide. So um, it's, it should be affordable for everybody. And we well, found it really effective. That's the that's the code if you, is it, I take it as a 15% discount. Yes. Yeah, so if you go on, you know, in the next few days and you want to buy one of the courses, if you enter that code, yeah, you'll get 15% off. So T-Touch Inc. Have, have given us that. So, you know, I want to thank Robin and Mandy for doing that. Yes, course. thank you, Robin and Mandy. <laughs> um, so, and the courses on there, they're not, you don't, if you do a course, it's, you know, it's not, you don't necessarily do it because you want to become a, a practitioner, but you might just want to do that work with your dog and, and build that relationship with them. Is that Absolutely. There is on that platform. There's you know, anyone can do any of the courses. It, it's going to be self-explanatory. We go through all of the touches. We go through all of the tools. Um, there's a really wide range. I mean, I, I can't really name. There's so we work so hard in you know in the lockdowns and stuff to get everything done. There should be something on there that will suit everybody. Yeah, I, I I must do the fireworks one. Well, the, it'll be thunderstorms for my boy. He's very. Yeah noise phobic so yeah it'd be nice to be able to help him through yeah that issue when yeah because we're coming into storm season <laughs> oh no yeah and some of the courses are self-paced so you just go on and do them on your own and then some of them have live elements so you'll get the self-paced element of it but then you'll get like two maybe two hour sessions with myself or other instructors oh, so that if you're not so confident about oh I'm, i need to really have someone guide me through it then you've got that as well so yeah all my courses you can either do a self-paced or you can come and, and, and book on a live one but you get the self-paced bit the minute you register so you know if you're going oh well the course i want isn't until later in the year it doesn't matter because you can start training and then you can if you've got the questions or whatever and say, for example, with like the firework one, I would schedule them to come into kind of season. Say, so I do one for the 4th of July, and in the UK, I do oh, one for the yeah. after my works. Yeah, that's great. So, any, um, there doesn't appear to be any questions. So, any final words on calming a dog using T Touch before we wrap up? I think just do the work and see what happens. You know, it, it's even if you're skeptical, just learning a couple of the touches or learning a couple of, you know, the lead stroking or applying a body wrap, you know, can have an amazing effect on our dogs and how they feel. So, you know, it, you know, to some people, they may still go, oh, I'm not too sure about that. It seems just really different. But after, like I say, over 20 years of using the work and seeing so many dramatic changes in our in the dogs and the animals I've worked with, just just have a go because you know you you might find that it'll really really help. Yeah, no, thank you. That's um, amazing, um, and thank you to to Robin and um, uh, my mind is gone break. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the discount code, please give them our, our thanks as well. But yeah, it's been lovely talking to you. Um, and I just, yeah, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Yeah. You're welcome. I've been, I love doing it. <sighs>